I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Ratek here. Today's video will be a big one. This will be a big list video. And today's video will consist of the top 15 best science fiction and fantasy series of all time. But although I mentioned that this will be a top 15, there will be 30 series mentioned here. Why 30? because today's video is not actually my list. So today is also a way of me celebrating my 20,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. Apparently I have reached 20,000 subscribers and on my Patreon, my community tab, and also on my Twitter account, I ask all of you, I ask everyone, what's your favorite fantasy or sci-fi series of all time? And in total, I received more than 400 series. Yes, that's a lot of series. For those of you who don't know, I did not put any limitations. So basically anyone can mention as many as they want any favorite fantasy series, books, or sci-fi that they want. And yes, in total, I received more or less 400 series and also a total of 1,253 votes. So yes, this video actually took me more than eight hours to do. And that's not even counting the recording and editing yet. So why are there 30 series in the top 15 best series list? Well, the answer to that is pretty simple because the majority of the series receive the same number of votes. As I proceed with this video, I think you will understand what I mean. So I will start immediately. And out of 30 series mentioned here, I've read 23. I'm in the middle of reading through three series and also four series I haven't read yet. So yeah, without further ado, here is the top 30 or the top 15 best fantasy and sci-fi series of all time according to 400 readers. And I'm also including a standalone prequel to a series. So at the number 15 spot, we have three series and the three of them receive eight votes each. And the first one is the Deva Bad Trilogy by Shannon Chakraborty. I have actually uh, attempted reading through City of Brass uh, a long time ago. I kind of forgot now, but back then I wasn't fully immersed with it and I just kind of uh, dropped it because I wasn't feeling like I was in the right mood to read through the Deva Bad Trilogy back then. But I've heard from many fans of the series, they thought that City of Brass was okay. But the second book and the third book, The Kingdom of Copper and also The Empire of Gold were amazing. So the next time I'm going to try reading through the Deva Bad Trilogy again, I will make sure to remember this. And then the next series, or to be more precise, the next book in the number 15 spot is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Honestly speaking, this is my unpopular opinion. I do not like uh, The Hobbit. I think uh, as many of you know, The Hobbit was originally intended and written for children. And I really think that the book, the content of the book reflected that. And yeah, I'm not too much of a fan of The Hobbit, but I can clearly understand why so many people consider The Hobbit as one of their favorite books of all time. And finally, the last series in the number 15 spot is The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. This is also the only urban fantasy series on this list. The Dresden Files was a surprising series for me. I didn't expect that uh, this series would become one of my favorite series of all time, but it did. It actually ended up being one of my favorite ongoing series right now. I think the series started becoming something truly amazing starting from the seventh book. And I know that that's a lot of books, but still it was worth the perseverance. That beat, in my opinion, definitely changed my mind about the series. And after that, I couldn't put the series down and it just keeps getting better and better with each book. At the very least, The Dresden Files is very consistent in its high quality starting from the seventh book and beyond. So that's it for the number 15 spot. Now let's move on to the number 14 spot. And in the number 14 spot, we have four series and all of them receive nine votes. And for the first one I'm going to mention, this will be for The Ryria Revelations or also The Ryria Chronicles by Michael J. Sullivan. So The Ryria Revelation is one of my favorite series of all time as well. One of my favorite completed fantasy series. And yes, it has one of the best bromance in epic fantasy, Royce and Hadrian, in my opinion. And also The Ryria Revelations has one of the best conclusion to a fantasy series that I've read. This was true since 2017. And earlier this year, I just did a reread of the Ryria Revelations. And well, I think that sentiment just grows stronger, especially because I took this reread after I actually read the Ryria Chronicles now. 
which expanded upon the background and characterizations of Royce and Hadrian even more. And the next series in the number 14 spot is the We Knowing Flame trilogy by Jen Williams. I am so happy to actually see uh, the We Knowing Flame trilogy existing on this list because this has always been one of my favorite trilogy for I think two years now, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, this has been quite a while and I'm happy to see that more readers are giving this series the chance it deserves. Jen Williams is a great writer and this series has some of the best aerial battles, animal companions, and also relationship and character developments that I've read. And then the next series in the number 14 spot is The Bound and the Broken series by Ryan Cahill. So this is one of the two, wait, out of the three, if I count uh, The Raria Chronicles by Michael J. Sullivan, one of the three sub-published fantasy series that appeared on this list. And yeah, this is impressive. Ryan Cahill and The Bound and the Broken, I think this author and also this series is currently gaining a lot of traction in social media and the fantasy community. And understandably, I've read through every book in The Bound and the Broken, and I think this series will click with many readers, especially if those readers are, like me, someone who love reading classic fantasy told with a modern narrative. And that's exactly what is delivered in The Bound and the Broken series by Ryan Cahill. And also, Ryan Cahill is a very consistent author, and now I think he's planning to release the third book in the series uh, in January. So yeah, and that book will be 420,000 words long. So yeah, even bigger than Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. Let that sink in. It is an amazing series, and it seems very likely that The Bound and the Broken will become a very huge series, especially because considering that, I think Ryan K. Hill has mentioned that The Bound and the Broken will be five books long, five books long plus many novellas so yeah and the last series in the number 14 spot is one of my favorite trilogies of all time and it is the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington. This is a truly incredible series in my opinion the first book started very accessible to many fantasy readers but the second book and also the third book increased so much in its complexity. It's one of the most well plotted series that I've read and also it has one of the best characters that I've read in fantasy, Caden. Caden is one of my favorite characters of all time in fantasy and just like the Ryria revelations, I think the ending to the Lycanius trilogy is one of the best of all time in epic fantasy. It is truly stunning and I hope that many readers will still give this series a try because James Islington and also the Lycanius trilogy, a series that uh, Islington, as mentioned, started because he was inspired from reading the Mistborn trilogy and also the Kingkiller Chronicles. It's a series that I think deserves so much more recognition. And now let's move on to the number 13 spot. And just like uh, the number 14 spot, the number 13 spot actually have four series. And all these four series receive 10 votes. And the first one in the number 13 spot is Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Now this is currently still a standalone novel and it is one of my favorite standalone novels, especially because it has started to become something truly important to actually read Warbreaker if you're interested in diving through the entire Cosmic Universe by Brandon Sanderson. But Sanderson has mentioned plenty of times that Warbreaker will be at least a duology. And although we have no idea when the sequel will be out, but for now, I think many people, myself included, agreed that Warbreaker is one of the best standalone books of all time. And moving on to the next one is another series that received 10 votes, and this is The Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch. This is one of my favorite ongoing series as well, and just like The King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss and A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, this series belongs in the Bermuda Triangle of excellent epic fantasy, in my opinion even if the status of their completion is unknown. But yeah, I love The Gentleman Bastards. I think it is an incredible series. And The Lies of Locke Lamora is still one of my favorite books. One of my favorite first book of a series that I've read. I think it is heist epic fantasy done right. And just like Ryria Revelations, uh, The Gentleman Bastards has one of the best bromance in epic fantasy. Locke and Jean is one of the best duo, and I think many people will love these characters. And the next series in the number 13 spot is The Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. So this trilogy, all books in the trilogy, actually won the best novel in the Hugo Award. And I think that is an amazing achievement. I love uh, the first book, the fifth season, I didn't really like the second book, The Obelix Gate, but also I think the third book, The Stone Sky, is the best of the trilogy. 
And yes, I love this trilogy. I think the magic system looks awesome. And Jemisin dealt with a lot of resonating themes such as motherhood and many more in this trilogy. I overall definitely love this trilogy and I think if you haven't read this one, you should definitely take a read at it. And finally, the last series in the number 13 spot is The Band by Nicholas Eames. The first book is Kings of the Wild and the second book is Bloody Rose. The third book, Outlaw Empire, is not out yet, but rest assured that I think it will be out eventually. Nicholas Ims is hard at work uh, with this book. And The Band is a series of standalone trilogies and both books are in my list of favorite books of all time. I love Kings of the Wild and I love Bloody Rose. And both of them, even though they're kind of different from each other, I think both of them are some of the best books in epic fantasy. I love the brotherhood, I love the humor, I love the action sequences, and I love all the gaming and Easter egg reference contained inside this series. Amazing series and I'm truly pleased to see many people still mention the band even though the third book outlaw empire hasn't been out for quite a while now but nick if you're watching this keep up the great work and i am so looking forward to reading outlaw empire and now let's move on to the number 12 spot and in the number 12 spot we have only two series yay <laughs> only two series and both of them receive 11 votes and the first one is the poppy war trilogy by rf kuang and I know that this series now has become a series that uh, people either absolutely love or absolutely hate. And luckily for me, I love this trilogy. I understand the issues that people had with this trilogy, but at the same time, it didn't bother me too much and I love this trilogy. I think it is an incredible Grim Dark inspired uh, Asian military fantasy series. I love the Poppy War trilogy and I think Babel uh, R.F. Kuang's newest book is even better than the Poppy War trilogy. And the other series on the number 12 spot is Dune by Frank Herbert. So Dune is a series that I haven't finished. I've read only the first book and I liked it. But there were plenty of aspects in this book that I think, personally speaking, were a bit uh, outdated in my opinion. Like the omniscient writing style which took me quite a while to get used to. It really took me quite a while. But at the same time, I think on reread someday, I think I will love Dune much more than my first time reading through it. And once that day happened, I will try to continue with the series because many actually kind of convinced me that once I continue with the series, I think it will make me love the series even more than just uh, reading the first book. And well, Dune has been considered as one of the greatest sci-fi novels and sci-fi series of all time. And I'm not surprised to actually see this series being mentioned here as one of the greatest sci-fi series. And by the way, there are only two sci-fi series on this list and Dune is one of them. The other one, you will find out soon. And moving on to the number 11 spot, with 12 votes, there is only one series here and it is a series that I haven't read. It is The Dark Tower by Stephen King. So The Dark Tower, the first book, The Gunslinger, is a book that I've tried to read a long time ago, like really a long time ago. And I must say, I did not understand what I read back then. And I think one day I have to give this series a try again. But yes, I think many have considered uh, The Dark Tower as one of the greatest fantasy series of all time. And I hope to feel the same someday because from reading The Stand and also reading Swan Song, I personally prefer Swan Song so much more than The Stand. And I look forward to reading Stephen King's take on fantasy. And now we move on to the number 10 spot. With 14 votes, we have three series here. And the first one is The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. Well, The Dandelion Dynasty is a series that I've started and finished this year. This was one of my priority series this year and I'm glad to finally finish this one. And I am also will be very pleased to mention that The Dandelion Dynasty has become one of my favorite series of all time as well. It is truly terrific and there are so many things that I love about this series. So many things that Ken Liu did right. And in my opinion, it deserves a spot in one of the best fantasy series of all time lists in many other lists other than this one amazing series and i think personally it's still very underhyped so you should read the dandelion dynasty if you haven't read it and yes i have actually done a review plenty of reviews on this series on this channel and the next series in the number 10 spot is the king killer chronicle by patrick Rothfuss. so yes i have mentioned many times that the king killer chronicle despite its unfinished status remain as one of my favorite series of all time but not gonna lie, I expect the King Killer Chronicle to rank much higher. But apparently, it didn't. But at the same time, I also understand. Because 
It has been 11 years since the Wise Man's Fear came out. Almost 12 years since the Wise Man's Fear came out. So I think, understandably, many people have lost their enthusiasm and also maybe affection for this series. But personally speaking, I think The King Killer Chronicle will remain always as one of the best fantasy series that I've read, especially the first book, The Name of the Wind, which I considered up to this day to be the best fantasy debut that I've read. And the last series on the number 10 spot is The Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Trilogy by Tad Williams, or also the Austin Art Saga. But most of the votes actually went to Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Trilogy. But, well, I haven't read this series yet. I have always wanted to read the entirety of the Austin Art Saga, and I think I will make sure to fix that situation next year. Rest assured that the Austin Art Saga, the entirety of the Austin Art Saga, not just Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Trilogy, will be one of my priority series to start and finish in the year 2023, and I think I will make sure to make that happen. I've heard nothing but great things about this series, and I've heard that it has inspired many amazing fantasy series like uh, the Kingkiller Chronicle that I just mentioned, and also A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. And moving on to the number 9 spot, with 15 votes, there is only one series here, and it is the entirety of the This World series by Terry Pratchett. But half of the votes actually went to the Night Watch uh, sub-series. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that's the title of the sub-series. So again, uh, This World, just like the Austin Art Saga, is a series that I haven't finished. I haven't finished not even one book. Not even one book in the This World series. Honestly, I've tried reading more uh, last year. I think I made it to around a 40%, if I'm not mistaken. But I just kind of felt like I wasn't in the right reading mood for it. I just couldn't connect with much of the jokes, with much of the writing in Mort back then. I hope that the next time I attempt to reading any books in the This World, I hope that it will be a much better experience. But excluding my opinion, come on, This World has always been mentioned as one of the greatest fantasy series of all time. <laughs> I don't think my opinion, my negative, my kind of negative opinion will change that. And at the number 8 spot with 16 votes, this is Harry Potter. Well, Harry Potter, I don't think I need to say too much about this one. But from my experience, I've read only, I think, uh, the third book up to the sixth book. I don't know why I didn't read the first and the second book. Oh yeah, I actually remember. So back then, I had no money to actually uh, buy the books, the Harry Potter books. So I borrowed it from my friend. And I think I borrowed starting from the third book, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Or if I'm, if I'm wrong about this, I think I borrowed from the fourth book, The Goblet of Fire. I remember enjoying the books, but again, they didn't actually... I just thought that they were good and I needed to practice my English. So I just used Harry Potter to learn. But I totally understand, but I totally understand for many, many readers, countless readers around the world, this is the series that sparked their love to read fantasy novel. And moving on to the number 7 spot, we have two series with 18 votes. And the first one is actually a standalone spin-off prequel novel to the main series, and it is Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. The Sword of Kaigen is one of the two self-published fantasy books or series that appeared on this list, and I truly agree that this is one of the greatest fantasy novels of all time. I mean, in my opinion, this is still the best standalone novel and also the best self-published fantasy book that I've read, and I don't think this status will be changing anytime soon. I don't think it will. I love the Sword of Kaigen so much, I think the characterizations, the actions, everything about it was just phenomenal. And I think if you haven't read this one, you are missing out. You should definitely read the Sword of Kaigen if you love epic fantasy novel. And at the back of the book, you can actually see my word here. One of the most intense books that I've read. And I stand by my word to this day. It is truly a masterpiece. And the other series in the number 7 spot is one of the other two sci-fi series on this list, and it is my favorite sci-fi series of all time. It is The Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. This is still one of my favorite ongoing series, and it's still my favorite sci-fi series of all time. The 6th and the 7th book, oh sorry, the release date for the 7th book hasn't been confirmed yet, but the 6th book, Lightbringer, has been confirmed to be released in July 2023, and it is one of my most anticipated books right now. I truly love Red Rising Saga, and I look forward to doing a second read 
Amazingly, I haven't done any second read of this series. I look forward to doing a second read of the Red Rising Saga next year. From actions, characterizations, bromance, the bromance between uh, Darrow and Severo is still one of my favorite uh, duo of all time. The pacing and the writing, I think everything about Red Rising Saga just click with me so well. And now let's move to the number six spot. There is only one series here and it received 22 votes and this series is The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan and also Brandon Sanderson for the final three books. So I am still in the middle of reading through The Wheel of Time, but I totally understand why The Wheel of Time has been so often mentioned as one of the seminal works in epic fantasy. And so many of the fans consider The Wheel of Time to be the greatest fantasy series to ever be written. In my opinion, this series hasn't become one of my favorite series yet. It hasn't become one of my favorite series, but I'm also glad to actually continue after reading through The Shadow Rising because The Shadow Rising you can actually read my reviews for The Shadow Rising on Goodreads here, but The Shadow Rising disappointed me so much. And after reading through The Shadow Rising, I didn't continue with the series for two years. And somehow the urge to actually continue with the series appeared this year, and I did it by reading through The Fires of Heaven and also the sixth book, The Lord of Chaos. I love both of them. I think both of them are the best books in The Wheel of Time so far. And if I have to choose, I think The Lord of Chaos is indeed the best books in the series so far. And <laughs> I will have to read a crown of swords next month i heard that this is the beginning of the slog uh, installment of the books so yeah wish me luck and now we're entering the top five ranking and at the number five spot we have two series with 28 votes and the first one is malazan book of the fallen by steven erickson again i think i've mentioned so many times that malazan and book of the fallen is one of the most complex and epic fantasy series that i've read and it is also the most rewarding epic fantasy series. It is not an easy fantasy series to tackle, but I think if you can click with Steven Erickson's storytelling style, it's epic madness, and I think this will no doubt become one of your favorite series of all time as well. I'm not too much of a fan of Malazan Empire, but personally, I think Malazan Book of the Fallen should at least be attempted by every fans of epic fantasy. I love Malazan Book of the Fallen so much, I already did a reread of the first three books, and somehow those three books actually improve on my reread somehow. And I already love the first three books so much, especially Memories of Ice. And the other series in the number five spot is The Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee. I am truly happy to see The Greenbone Saga ranking this high in the eye of many readers. I truly love The Greenbone Saga. I think uh, many of you who watch my channel know about this already, but The Greenbone Saga is my favorite completed fantasy trilogy of all time. Seriously, at the number one spot, it is my favorite completed fantasy trilogy and I think this one deserves to be read by every single fantasy reader. This is urban epic fantasy at its best and the characterizations is just a masterpiece. Seriously, Fondali did such an amazing job with the characters, the pacing, and the actions in this series, but mostly, in my opinion, on the characterizations. The character development for the protagonist and antagonist in the Greenbone Saga, especially in Jade Legacy, is second to none. Absolutely incredible and you should read the Greenbone Saga if you haven't read it. And at the number four spot, we have two series and these two series received 38 votes. So yeah, that's a huge increase from the number five spot. And the first series on the number four spot is probably the most important fantasy series of all time for me and it is The Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I have talked about how much I treasure this trilogy. This is the first trilogy that actually sparked my love for reading fantasy novels. And I think because of that, yes, this is actually the first, uh, the first set of physical books that I ever bought with my own money. So yeah, I will always keep this mass market paperback a box set. And yes, Miss Bone Trilogy will never change its status from becoming one of my favorite series of all time. And yeah, it goes without saying that I am definitely biased about this trilogy. I've read plenty of series that in my opinion, is better than the Miss Bone Trilogy. But regarding its sentimentality, I don't think anything will replace the Miss Bone Trilogy as the most important series that I've read. Because again, as I said constantly, this series sparked my love for reading fantasy novels. And I'm glad to see so many people voting the Miss Bone Trilogy as one of the best fantasy series of all time as well. And the other series on the number four spot is again one of my top favorite series of all time and I think many of you actually know me because of uh, my praises for this series and it is The Faithful and the Fallen 
by John Gwynn. I'm kind of conflicted about this because from my perspective, I think Of Blood and Bone should be considered as part of the series of The Faithful and the Fallen. It is a sequel series to The Faithful and the Fallen, but I kinda think of these two series as the Banished Land saga. But the majority of the votes, all 38 votes, actually went to The Faithful and the Fallen. Only 6 votes actually went to Of Blood and Bone trilogy. But well, I think many of you know my thoughts and my opinion on The Faithful and the Fallen already. I think it is truly one of the greatest epic fantasy series of all time. The characters felt so real, and the actions, my god, the actions, I think John Gwynn, write some of the best close quarter combat scenes to ever exist in epic fantasy. And yes, if I have to choose, if I really have to choose, I will choose The Faithful and the Fallen over Of Blood and Bone trilogy because the characters, the characters in The Faithful and the Fallen, all of them, all of them have become so real to me, so real. And moving on to the number three spot, there is only one series on this list and it received 39 votes. It is a Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. I personally think that the first three books in A Song of Ice and Fire, A Game of Thrones, A Clash of Kings, and also A Storm of Swords are some of the best epic fantasy books to ever exist in epic fantasy genre. I think they are incredibly important to the genre and A Storm of Swords is a masterpiece in epic fantasy. A Song of Ice and Fire, whether it's the book series or the TV show adaptation, has pretty much made the grimdark subgenre boom in its popularity and I'm grateful because grimdark is one of my favorite subgenre and I don't think I would have dived into this subgenre without actually loving A Song of Ice and Fire in the first place. Even though I've read many grimdark manga series or I've played many grimdark video games, well, I think when it comes to novels, A Song of Ice and Fire, my love for A Song of Ice and Fire, especially the TV show, uh, the first season up to the sixth season, not the seventh and the eighth season, the first six seasons of the TV show adaptation is hugely responsible in giving me the push to actually read more grimdark fantasy novels in the first place. So yes, I will always consider A Song of Ice and Fire as one of the greatest epic fantasy series to ever be written and I'm looking forward to doing a second read of A Feast for Crows and also A Dance with Dragons because I heard on reread the reading experience of reading A Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons will improve significantly. And speaking of grimdark, at the runner-up spot we have only one series and it received 46 votes. And this is The First Law World by Joe Abercrombie. I consider the entirety of The First Law World to be the best. It is the best grimdark fantasy series of all time for me. And actually, most of the votes actually went, uh, about half of the votes actually went to the First Law trilogy. But I think the entire First Law World can be considered as one giant series because all of them, even the standalone trilogy, are very much connected to each other. And no one does characterizations as good as Joe Abercrombie in the grimdark subgenre, in my opinion. And also, Joe Abercrombie, just like John Gwynn, is one of my favorite authors when it comes to writing close quarter combat scene. He's an incredibly terrific author when it comes to writing characters, characterizations and development, battle scenes, and also humor. I love everything about the first law world. Love it so much. And I am truly happy to see the first law world considered to be one of so many people's favorite series of all time. And now we have finally arrived at the number one spot on this list and there are actually three series on this list. I'm not kidding. I didn't do anything to this list. I pretty much just input the number of votes and they all arrive at the number 54 votes for these three series. So these three tied at the number one spot and the first one is The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb the 16th book series in the realm of the Elderlings. I think many readers of this series have pretty much considered the entire 16th book series as one huge series divided into five sub-series. And I totally agree with this because all of them are connected with each other. And when it comes to the matter of characterizations and prose, I think Robin Hobb is is really top tier. Robin Hobb's prose is utterly beautiful even though I didn't click with some of the books in the realm of the Elder Links like Assassin's Quest and also Rainwild Chronicles, but for the rest, I love them all. Especially Lifeship Traders and also the last trilogy, the Fits and the Full trilogy is one of the best trilogy of all time if you can consider that to be a trilogy that is separate from the realm of the Elder Links. But again, as I constantly said, well, 
The Realm of the Underlings, in my opinion, is a 16 book series and it is one of the best epic fantasy series of all time. And I'm actually very pleased to see so many people vote for The Realm of the Underlings by Robin Hobb. I think she deserves so much recognition and she deserves even more. Robin Hobb is, in my opinion, one of the queens of epic fantasy. And the next series tied in the number one spot is actually my favorite ongoing series of all time and it is The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. I think The Stormlight Archive from my perspective, it is epic fantasy at its best. I love everything, everything about the Stormlight Archive. I think this is Brandon Sanderson's magnum opus, and I, as a fantasy reader, consider myself truly blessed to have read the Stormlight Archive. Everything about it, the characterizations, the magic system, the well-plotted story, and the intricate world building, I love, I love everything about the Stormlight Archive. And I think for many years to come, the Stormlight Archive will remain as my number one favorite ongoing series of all time, unless I consider the fifth book of the series, which will mark the end of the Stormlight Archive part one, unless I consider the Stormlight Archive part one as a completed series. But I think overall, the Stormlight Archive, which will still, I think, go on for probably two decades, two decades or something close to that, will remain as my favorite ongoing series of all time. So I really hope that Brandon Sanderson will always remain healthy so he can write the Cosmere books, all the Cosmere books that he wants to write. And I'm not surprised at all to see the Stormlight Archive ranking at the number one spot. Not surprised at all. It is quite likely, right now, the most popular and well-received adult fantasy, adult epic fantasy series without a TV show adaptation right now. And finally, the last series at the number one spot, surprising absolutely no one, it is The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. I don't need to say anything else about The Lord of the Rings, right? I mean, pretty much everyone knows about The Lord of the Rings now. Everyone knows why. It is considered to be the greatest fantasy series of all time. I mean, J.R.R. Tolkien with The Lord of the Rings has pretty much shaped and changed the landscape of the epic fantasy genre. My unpopular opinion though is that I enjoyed, I really enjoyed The Lord of the Rings, but I don't consider The Lord of the Rings to be one of my favorite series of all time. That's my unpopular opinion because somehow I actually consider The Children of Hurin to be J.R.R. Tolkien's best work. And I really, I'm really sad. No one, absolutely no one voted for the children of Hurin. But oh well, maybe it is indeed an unpopular opinion of mine to consider uh, the children of Hurin to be J.R.R. Tolkien's best work. But yeah, The Lord of the Rings is the last series on the number one spot and it is totally well deserved. I mean, seriously, the fantasy genre won't be where it is today without the Lord of the Rings. So that's the end of this long video. Do let me know your thoughts on this video. I have spent many hours, many hours on this video and do let me know whether you want me to make this kind of video again one day in the future or not. But again, I just want to say thank you so much to those of you who keep on watching my videos, keep on supporting my content, becoming my patrons, or just watching my contents really. It is quite crazy that after two years now, I have 20,000 subscribers on this channel and I am truly grateful to every single one of you. And again, let me know your thoughts on this list. Do you agree with the positioning and the ranking of this list? And just as a reminder, this is not my list. This is the top 15 or the top 30 best fantasy and sci-fi series of all time according to 400 readers. My updated favorite series of all time will be posted at the end of December. And I hope many of you will watch that. So yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.